Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of Light at the End of the Funnel podcast and I'm really excited to have the love twins on today, Gladys Diaz and Michelle Rosa. And they are not only amazing experts in their field, but they're also two speakers of my upcoming event, Entrepreneur City Live. So, so happy to have you guys on here. I'm going to do a quick introduction. They are the dating and relationship coaches for Hearts Desire International LLC and Hearts Desire's mission is to transform the world one woman one heart and one relationship at a time by providing women with the tools resources and support that will empower them to create ex and experience and nurture a loving passionate intimate fulfilling relationship or relationships that last for a lifetime so I'm so excited to have you on here Gladys Michelle Thank you very much. And I'll kind of open up space in case I missed anything. Well, first of all, thank you so much for the invitation, not only to be on your podcast, but to be speakers at Entre Entrepreneur City Live. So excited to finally be able to meet you in person. We've known each other through social media for a <laughs> while. So it's going to be great to hug you in person. And yeah, I mean, we, we really do take our mission seriously that, that every single woman on the planet gets to experience the joy of loving and being loved every single day of her life, loved, accepted, encouraged, championed, as Michelle loves to say, yeah. um, in her life and in her, as, including her love life as she gets to have it all. So we're super excited to be able to share this message with your audience. Absolutely. Well, we're, we're excited to have you guys on here and I love, I love the word champion too, Michelle. That's beautiful. <laughs> Um, and you're, and you're right. I mean, to be in a, to be a woman and an entrepreneur too, <laughs> at the same time, sometimes it, it can feel a little bit like driving <laughs> the force like forward and sometimes just going so fast. And I have to, I have to say for, for me, I, I have a wonderful experience with my husband where he's beside me sometimes driving, sometimes in the passenger, passenger seat, but that took some work too, um, <laughs> to share. <laughs> So I'm really excited for what you guys get to speak about today. And I'm just going to kind of open it up a little bit to what is it that you guys are really passionate about with women? What are you, what are you really passionate about helping them fulfill in their lives? What we're really passionate about, I mean, Gladys said a little bit of it, but just to extend on that, it's that a woman knows that she can have an extraordinary career, business, have that, that piece of her life really fulfill her and also be fulfilled and excited and happy in her love life. I think a lot of women, especially the entrepreneurial successful businesswoman, which is the woman that we attract the most as clients, feel that they are either going to have to choose one or the other, or they have this idea of you know, balance, which in our experience and what we train is that balance it's not about balance it's about harmony you know how a song has ups and downs it's about creating that harmony so you can have it all so you never have to choose between one or the other and to feel powerful in both of those areas and understand that the very things that make you successful in your business which is what we do and spend the majority of our time in if we really think about the amount of hours we spend at our work and our business are not the same skills that are going to make you successful in your love life. Some of them are related, but the majority of them that are going to make you really successful in love are not the ones that we go to right away. And so we use the ones for work in love. And then that's why we're like, where is he? <laughs> I don't know why it's probably from my own thing. Um, but I, I noticed that I used to, and I'm, and I still have to work on it a little bit, um, have a checklist <laughs> with my husband when I was done. Cause you know, I run a business and I always have checklists and I'm like, okay, now he walks through the door from corporate and I'm like, okay, can you do a, B and C and get it done in the next hour? And man, you know, that didn't work very well. <laughs> that management from business to relationship did not go very well. <laughs> I always like to use a little phrase, your man does not want to be man-itched. He really doesn't. He doesn't want to be told what to do, by when to do, and how it needs to be done. And that's where that, that we call it like shifting from the unstoppable woman yeah. in your business. We are used to driving things, getting things done, you know, directing our team. 
and we're in that and m many women don't like to think of it but that is a masculine energy anytime that we're in a do even if you're selling lipstick if you're in a doing mode you're in a in a, in a masculine energy so we talk about shifting mm -hmm. from being mm -hmm. the unstoppable woman in your business or your career into being the irresistible woman in your love life so that rather than requiring him to do things you're inspiring him to do things and it's not about manipulation it's just about the way you approach it the way you express yourself in your relationship needs to be different yeah. from the way you yeah. do it in your business because the goals are different you're not wanting the same things in your romantic relationship that you necessarily want in the relationship that you have with your subordinates or your clients or you know your direct reports yeah that's a good point so how do you inspire <laughs> good question so you want to take that one how do you inspire instead of require how do you inspire it really is it's a skill that you learn on how to express what you want without it coming across like a demand like a directive which is what we're used to in business and it's okay to do that you can still ask for what you want you can still get what you want but you can express it in a way that that the man that you're expressing it to can hear it and he sees it as an opportunity to make you happy rather than a requirement to keep you from becoming upset so mm. that slight change in the way that you ask it and then you let go of any expectation that he has to do it right our employees are Direct reports pretty much have to do what we say because that's the way that it is in that environment. It's not that way in relationships where you have two people who have their own wants, their own needs, their own desires, and their own plans. And then you're bringing those two lives together. So saying it in a way that inspires means it sounds like an invitation and then you let go expectation. Right. So an example would be instead of saying, I want you to cook dinner. Right, I'm tired. Usually, it's preceded by a complaint. I've been working all day. I'm so tired. <laughs> so that's a whole other thing. That's a whole other <laughs> aspect of it. Um, instead of instead of all that, you know, I've been working all day. I've been on the phone. I didn't have time to take anything out. Da, 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 and all that starts to sound like is static. Like shh, like when you're trying to hear. I call it the the like you're trying to listen to a radio station. And all I hear is like bits and pieces of it. He can't quite capture what is it that you want. And so instead of all that to then say, and I want you to cook, you could just say, you know, honey, I really would rather not cook tonight. Now, notice all the possibilities that open up. You could volunteer to cook. You can order takeout. You can have cereal for, you know, for dinner. Like there's all these possibilities. You could, go out. <laughs> yeah, you could go out. He might say, you know what, honey, let me take you. Let me take you out. You've been in this cave all day. <laughs> you know, if you work from home. Let me go ahead and take you out. And now, but there's all these possibilities versus when you say, I need you to cook dinner tonight. There was one requirement. Yeah. And then he, by the way, may also have been out slaying dragons today. It may not have had a great day and may not feel like cooking. Like I don't ever, ever feel like cooking. So I can completely understand another human being not wanting to cook. <laughs> but you know what? There's people who get paid to do it everywhere. You know, you can order it. <laughs> So, so, but the difference is that when I say I'm, first of all, when I say I really prefer not to, not to cook tonight, there's a vulnerability there, which instantaneously sparks the man's natural desire. Michelle spoke about his desire to please. There's also two other P's to protect and provide. So you've just created an opportunity for him to do three of the things that give men like that. Those are the three most important things to them when it yeah. comes to the one they love to be able to provide for, please and protect. So now he gets to please you because you won't have to cook. He gets to provide a meal for you and he gets to kind of protect you from the stuff you've been dealing with all day. So it's a, an absolute win-win because he gets to do the things that give him light and life and you get to receive. Yeah. It's so funny because the first thing that came to mind when you guys were explaining this is like you're giving him the opportunity to be your knight in shining armor. Yeah. Like that's exactly what came forward. So, aw. I love that. I'm going to try that one more. <laughs> um, so this is, this is, uh, this is amazing information. I, I guess my next question is, so this, this works great for, for married couples and people who are in a couple. What about those women who are, are trying to 
to bring in love mm -hmm. in, in these situations how can they be inspiring during dating right during or during the attraction phase I guess is I feel like I'm talking a little bit about funnels but you know what I mean right <laughs> <laughs> well, the, the thing that's gonna be the biggest I guess the biggest eye-opener for the women who come and they come and they listen to us speak at Entrepreneur City Live is that ability to be able to switch from work mode into dating and relationship mode. Yeah. There is a way to transition from that because if we don't, like Gladys mentioned, we will be still in that masculine energy. So, I mean, in my own experience, and I'll be sharing a little bit about it at the event, in my own experience, I, that's what happened to me. I could not figure out, I had been divorced, I could not figure out why a woman who was smart, intelligent, attractive, great mom, had great friends, knew so much about so much, could not get into a relationship where a man wanted to be equally committed to me as I wanted to be to him. Why did I keep attracting men who didn't want that? Mm -hmm. Why did I keep attracting what, you know, the same person but in different bodies? And that's what it felt like to me. I was attracting the same guy in all these different bodies and I just couldn't figure out. It was really frustrating. And it was when I learned how to transition from that masculine energy mm -hmm. to my feminine essence or what we call our your irresistible essence that everything switched for me every i mean everything including the level of man that i started to attract into my life not only did they want to be in a relationship but they were we were a match in what we were interested in intellectually we have these amazing conversations spiritually connected i mean there was and there were plenty to choose from Mm -hmm. That whole scarcity thing that there was one guy I was supposed to meet, I started meeting a lot of really great men. So for the single woman, it's us being able to stay uh, or get in touch with something like Gladys said, our vulnerability, mm -hmm. which is our superpower, mm -hmm. our authenticity, and just know that we don't lose something by coming into our softness and our femininity. We actually gain something that's priceless. Oh, that's so beautifully said. It's It's so interesting because what you guys are speaking about there's there's a way of it in entrepreneurship there's like these different levels and I know you guys talked about how stepping more into your femininity and and having that transition from work to to f vulnerability is actually good for your business <laughs> it's actually good for prosperity so I would love for you guys to kind of break that down for for our audience as well well, thank you because a lot of times people people do ask you know what are we speak mostly primarily at entrepreneur events yeah. business conferences and the main reason honestly is because we know that that's where the powerful woman is sitting the powerful man too right yeah. but we tend to work mostly with women and that there is a you are not going crazy there are challenges that it is different for a powerful successful woman yeah. It, when it comes to love and relationships, because we've got this, this energetic thing going on about, you know, I feel powerful at work when I'm this way. Why in the hell is it not working over here? And you mentioned the whole, you know, Michelle mentioned scarcity, yeah. and the connection. So we always tell people the reason why there are two dating and relationship experts standing in front of you is because it has everything to do with true success. And true success is not about feeling great just at work. The reason mm -hmm. um, successful women tend to throw themselves and men too into their work is because it's where we feel the most powerful. We yeah. get the most success, we get the most achievements, results, and that's what drives a successful person, right? Success breeds success. However, the reason why we're here, or not even however, the reason why we're here yeah. <laughs> is because there's a direct correlation between, and Michelle's going to have, she, she knows all the facts and figures. I mean, there have been studies done. Some of the most successful, prosperous, and we're not just talking about, you know, making a little bit of change, like wealthy CEOs and entrepreneurs in the top, you know, Inc. 1000, all of those Forbes, they are married. They are in relationships. Mm -hmm. And there, so there is a direct correlation between that and making money. And because, and here's the thing, if you think I can either think about, think about it in your business, I can either invest in Facebook ads or invest in a business coach. 
automatically there is a scarcity conversation going on, which means you don't think you're going to make enough money to be able to do both. You need both. You need a coach giving you the strategy, the mindset, and you need Facebook ads in order to promote your work. Well, switch over to the relationship world of your thinking. I can either invest in my business or, you know, and learn the strategies and the skills that are going to make me successful in business or spend time getting, uh, learning how to be successful in my love life. There is a scarcity conversation happening and you cannot build wealth on top of a scarcity conversation. Yes. Even if you're successful, and I want you to think about this, ladies, mm -hmm. even if you are successful, that you've reached a certain level of success, it's only a fraction of a fraction of a fraction of what's possible when you actually get that you can have it all. Yeah. And there's a direct correlation. Your bank account is never, your net worth is never going to exceed your self-worth. And so we, that, those are the types of things that we bring in that we talk about and we speak sp specifically to the entrepreneurial woman mm -hmm. and the entrepreneurial man because there is a different listening. We have a different brain. Our brain are, is wired differently than the person who is, is working for someone else because we know that so much of what happens, well, everything that happens in our life is up to us. Yeah. Oh, beautifully put. And as you were saying that, I recall probably three women this year that I was, you know, because I, I do business coaching, that were saying, um, I'm not going to have a relationship until after my business takes off. <laughs> and I was like, oh, really? They're like, no, because it'll just distract me from my business and it's not going to go well. And to what you guys are saying, well, actually, it enhances all areas. Mm -hmm. I love that. What would you say to somebody who, because I have three times this year, what would you say to that lady if she came forward like, I don't have time, I want to get my business and then I'll go find a man when it's, it's going. What would you say? What I would say is, A, she's not alone. A lot of women think that. I thought that for a while. So what I would invite women to look at is what really is behind that. There's an I'm not enough. Like I'm not enough to do this and this or it's not enough, some not enough conversation, which once you get complete with that, once you're able to see that whatever's driving that internal dialogue conversation about either or not enough, once you get that resolved for yourself, which is the work, some of the work that we do with women, because we do teach you how to develop a much deeper, stronger, authentic relationship with yourself, mm -hmm. then you see that you can have not only the business you want, not only the love you want, you can have the leisure time you want, you can have the spirituality that you want, you can have the finances that you want, you can have everything that you want. Yeah. It's not this, you know, I've got to choose this or that kind of life. It's yeah. a this and that kind of life. And it's, that's what makes it so spectacular. And I just want to say one thing to the men who are watching this as well. We are not leaving you behind. We, I remember we spoke a couple of weeks ago at an event and I had four men come up and we go, you got, you have men down pat, you know, so much about us. So we're going to help also men to understand how you can communicate better. What can you do so that you can have a better relationship with your partner or future partner so that you can have the experience of having it all as well. Because I'll tell you, there are men out there who want to be in great relationships with amazing women. And they're just as confused as women are as why is this thing that I'm doing at work not working? It makes me so successful Aww. here. And that, so we're going to be talking to both men and women about yeah. what you can do so that you can really amp up and up level um, that this area of your life called love. Yeah. And I just want to say two more things that just popped into my head. Number one is it doesn't, you don't say I'm not enough. I don't think a lot of people go around saying that, but what it could mm -hmm. sound like is I don't know that I can handle it. Yeah. That's, I mean, if you think about it, I can't handle it. Much. Enough, so what we help you do is to get to what's really underneath it. So you can deal with it head on, yeah. um, get that fear, that limiting belief out of the way. And then the other thing I would say to both successful men and women, if you're having that conversation, like I need to do this first, mm -hmm. there is never, Danielle can tell you, Michelle can tell you, and Gladys can tell you. There is never as an entrepreneur going to be a time in your life when you are not up to big and amazing things. Yeah, so if you keep putting this off for the time when things settle down, you're yeah. going to be single or very unhappy in a relationship for, for a really long time. Because yeah. as entrepreneurs, we're always up-leveling. We're always taking our life to a new level, our business to a new level. 
And so that conversation about first I need to do this and then I can do that, as Michelle said so beautifully, it's, yeah. it's really you want to look at what's making me believe that I can't yeah. handle this and that. And yeah. let me get that taken care of right now because it's impacting the growth of my business. It's impacting yeah. my fulfillment in life. And I and just admit, I want it all. So let me learn how to get it. Oh, that's good. I want it all. And, and to what you guys are saying, women and men, they can have it all. So I know Eric's really excited to see you guys. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, I can use you guys. So coming from a very alpha, strong man, he's even very curious to what you guys are going to gonna be saying for men. So I, I think it's going to be incredible. I'm so excited to, I'm just so excited to hug you guys. Can I hug you at the same time? I have really long arms. Yeah, she gets a hug <laughs> <in> sandwich. <laughs> okay, you guys are coming in. I'm going to hug the twins. <laughs> uh, yeah, this is, this is amazing. And I really appreciate you guys kind of breaking this down and, and just telling women and men that they can have it all. Um, I, it's going to be just be a beautiful, beautiful occurrence with you guys in there with all these amazing entrepreneurs and uh, speaking to the entrepreneurial woman or man that I, I'm not stopping for anybody. We're going to go for a ride. That's what I tell my husband. I'm like, we're going to go for a ride. So let's do it together. And I, I wouldn't do it any other way. So you guys are totally right when it comes to entrepreneurial women and, and not stopping and just bringing it all together. I love that you guys are speaking to this. Thank you for everything that you guys are doing for the world mm -hmm. thank you thank you for the opportunity to share the message we really Absolutely. we really do believe that the, this world will be transformed through the hearts of women and guess what if it's every woman heart and relationship at a time that means there's a partner right there with her <laughs> and so we really we really do believe the transformation of this world will come through love oh i believe so too i'm so glad you guys are here um at this time right now to help to help everyone with this so any anything that you guys would like to promote they are going to be at entrepreneur city live in a couple weeks guys but if you want to talk to them sooner i'm sure we can make that happen too can't we yes absolutely um probably the best way to get in touch with us the fastest way is you can, obviously you can find us on facebook um hearts desire uh international and you can send us a private message we like to connect privately whenever possible you can also go to our website and when you go to hearts desire intl.com a little box will pop up and say ready for love and when you go in there you can actually schedule time yeah to speak with us and we'd love to be able to speak with you before the event see what it is that your your personal and relationship goals are and how we might be able to help you i mean why wait you know till november 1st through the third let's get, let's start the conversation now and then we get to meet in person right absolutely isn't that the best though when you get to connect and then meet in person like we did <laughs> so I'm excited. okay so I'll get that information I'll make sure that when we spread it around everyone has that um, so that they can connect more so thank you guys so much and just gonna open it up for any last words that you guys would like to leave the audience with well we just we're so excited about this opportunity and we just invite you to come to the event I mean We've been talking to Danielle about everything that's in store for you, and it's going to be amazing. It's going to be an amazing, incredible event with so much information, great people, great connections, networking. So to come with an open heart and an open mind and really come listening for how can I have it all? How can I take my business to the next level? How can I take my love life to the next level? What is it that I need so that I can do that? And to not judge yourself around it, just, you know, just come open to receive whatever it is. And please stop by our table. We would love to see you and have a conversation with you. And as Gladys and Danielle said before, call us, uh, schedule a call with us ahead of time and we'll give you some free, uh, a free call, a free coaching call to help you to start seeing what could you come in listening for and perhaps even create a great breakthrough for you before you even come to the event yeah oh that's all about the breakthroughs right <laughs> that's how we really shift everything is when we have those so thank you guys did you want to chime in to glass i want to make sure i give you space too <laughs> yeah, 
I, I think my sister said it beautifully, yeah. you know, anything, you know, the time between now and the event is the time to really just start opening up to everything that is possible. Yeah. So really start thinking about your intention, your intention for your business, your intention for your personal life, and really don't see it as two separate things, but this is my life. And what are the goals that I have for taking every, every aspect of my life to the next level? Because the speakers that are there, the, the, the lineup that Eric and Danielle have put together is amazing. And we're honored to be part of this group that gets to serve you for three days. So really just start, set a powerful intention and come to the event ready and willing to see it fulfilled. Oh, thank you guys. Okay. Well, you guys heard it here. Come and see us and go and see Gladys and Michelle. We'll have that information um, right here in the interview as they spread it around everywhere. Um, and let's let's see what we can do. Let's open up some hearts. Okay. Okay. Thank you guys so much for coming along and uh, stay tuned for another episode, guys, of Light at the End of the Funnel. Bye for now. Bye.